Let, let me get this straight. So when your enhancement level kept when failing with cron stones, so you never downgrade on accessories. Well, what about breaking? Does it not break anymore? No? Oh my God, that is actually a huge change for the accessory enhancement. That's really good. On I'm Game Design Executive oh, Leader at Black on, Desert Studio, Jessop Chang. Yeah, Finally, the hot long summer long has long passed long and long autumn long is here. Uh -huh. This summer was especially long and hot, okay. which was tiring at times. You know what else is long and hot? Times. Now that it's autumn, the fresh breeze blew in a change of mood. I wish all adventurers are having a wonderful day as each day passes. In today's commentary, we have the long-awaited Dosa Awakening prepared for you. Since his brief reveal in the Global Lab, many Dosa have been anticipating Awakening his is coming out next Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. And finally Tuesday. are able to present him to our adventurers. Yeah. We've prepared the Dosa's background and combat clips. We hope you look forward to it. You know, what I, you know what I have a problem with this video? I like that they want to still keep his voice, but they should have mixed it a little different. Inlay should be louder. The English narrator should be louder than, a lot louder than this. It's really weird hearing two voices. Be ashamed to only reveal Dosa's awakening, so we've prepared other news as well. Many have been curious about the background story or just of mute the, the guy. and along with that, we'll cover various topics and introduce yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go fast, chat. We have a lot to share with you, so we'll get it started right away. The first news is about Node Wars. Node Wars. Since the new Node Wars was right, many adventurers have sent us feedback. Among them, quite a few especially seem to miss the previous uh, version of Node Wars. Uh, According to Node Wars, allow anyone to participate in the with simple rules. And even if everyone isn't the strongest, any individual can have a chance to conquer a node. Plus, wars tend to move. They can choose the rule of building forts like before, where shifting between offense and defense for a more strategic approach towards victory is required. Or they can opt for the rule where a neutral fort is present that can be taken as a Especially since they have different I did say um, but voices. Also yeah. by the Lord's Guild. These rules will be applied in the Node Wars from Sunday to Friday, then reset on Saturday. However, for Node Wars in Balanos and Surrendia, since many participants there are still adapting or learning the ropes, they will not be affected by the two more months from now. As it is a massive overhaul of Node Wars, we hope our adventurers will show us their understanding. Yeah, I don't we'll care focus about on to deliver a smoother gameplay experience after the patch. This doesn't mean that we won't be working on other parts during this time. Other major and minor patches based on your feedback will be okay. applied as soon as we're done. Okay, developing. good, good, good. We plan on we patching like rotations, fault location adjustments, etc. to keep on improving uh... Node Wars. Next, let's talk about equipment items. Before we get started, I'd like to talk about what many are curious to hear, the development and intent behind the Sovereign Weapons. While developing the Sovereign okay, Weapon, okay. we have one major focus in mind. The Slumbering Origin Defense Gear and Devereka Accessories. Naturally, as Black Desert's best grade items, they were key deciding factors in setting the difficulty on this weapon's crafting. Okay. Looking okay. back, we've been very cautious about adding new equipment. There was a need to protect the value of existing items and to minimize uh -huh, the burden uh -huh. that comes with new items. And we still strive to hold this direction to some extent, even now. However, over time, the value and perception of these items changed. The two items mentioned, especially the Debrecht accessories, felt quite different from other accessories. Many adventurers currently probably associate Debrecht accessories with the feelings of annoyance, difficulty, and frustration. Right. Well, the, the, In the, the past, the I whole game is difficult and annoying to enhance. How about? How about you just not make it that difficult? Period. Who cares about those hardcore veterans that have hemorrhoids on top of their hemorrhoids that they already got all Deborah and they're complaining? Just keep it cute, keep it simple, keep it easy, keep it fun. The, the, the problem here isn't the Deborah being strong. The problem is that the enhancement system is old already. It's old, it's annoying, it, no new player likes that shit. Remove it. Items like the Ogre, Wing of Crescent Guardian, and Tongue Set were hard to enhance up to pen, but they were not as difficult as the Deborah accessories. It requires a lot of time and silver, and the enhancement difficulty is high. Even we, the developers of the game, felt the same way. However, Just until now, that. we prioritized direction over emotions, believing that the hard-earned items of our adventurers needed to uphold their high value. This is why we maintained the high difficulty. Yet, if this continued as is, the joy of progression and novelty could eventually whittle out. Okay, he's so we've attempted he's to address about it, about it right in now. different ways over the years. You are all very familiar with the added artifacts and light stones that can be used to enhance your setups. In the same vein, we introduced rare crystals and utilized the upgrade uh -huh. system with the addition of cups. Okay. Most of all, adventurers showed support for our endeavors. We believe adventurers understood the direction we were headed. We reminisced the moments when adventurers cheered for our new pursuits. 
This encouragement gave us the courage to continue in this direction. But even after all this, Deborah Accessories' influence on the game grew as time went by. When Deborah Accessories felt distant, it was all right. Too many but as more adventures became stronger, too much focus on Deborah Accessories. That's not the issue, man. <laughs> It's the enhancement system, is stupid. Now, more adventurers are feeling frustrated. While Debreka isn't the only reason for all of their frustration, but we believe it has significantly impacted them in a negative way. So, we concluded that change was necessary. That's why the sovereign weapon needed to be something special. And above all, its first impression was important. A new top-tier weapon. Following previous updates, people expect it to be harder, saying it'll definitely be harder than Slumbering Origin Gear and Deborah How difficult will it be to get? But we wanted to surprise everyone and overturn those expectations, making them say, what's this? Why is it so easy? That was easier than expected. We hoped adventurers found it easier than they thought. Of course, easy is relative. For a top-tier item, it was relatively easy. This is what we were aiming for. The reason was clear. Sovereign Weapon is the top-grade item. We believe it sets the standard for the difficulty of future top-grade equipment updates. We believe that this weapon could set that standard. For these reasons, the Sovereign Weapon Enhancement is split into 10 levels instead of 5, smoothing out the initial growth curve. While the number of required Chronostones can still be a burden, we've minimized it based on the current Monster Zone's net profit. It was challenging to pin down and advocate these Chronostone numbers, but we all agreed that future direction is more okay. important. Through this process, the Sovereign Weapon's current spec was finalized. Also, I don't think, like, um, the uh, one thing that I don't think they talk about much is that I don't think, like, acquiring the gear and all that is that bad of a thing and why people are having issues and why it doesn't garner more people is that there's really not much to do with that gear. Like, when you get the gear in BDO, like, what do you do? You just go grind on a more difficult spot, which is okay for the people that enjoy BDO and enjoy that wheel, but it's not going to get people to come to your game and enjoy that. It's a, such a niche thing. It's such a niche thing. Upgrading your stuff is fun for a while, but you gotta have a, something that people use these things on. And it used to be PVP, but now after level capping almost everything in the game, why do you really need the gear? Like the PVP is capped now, PVP is like dying, the PVP is dead. So then what do you really need the gear for now? However, we made a big mistake. And it's and it's part of the reason uh, why I'm in the, the Throne in Liberty chat. Part of the reason that I don't feel like pushing more in Throne in Liberty is because why? All the dungeons and stuff that the game has is super easy. I don't need to push any more gear here. I I feel like I reached the end game in this game and I feel like I don't really want to do anything. Because I'm not a PvPer. There's really not much for me to get out of this game. Not much more for me to push anymore. Is it boring? I don't think that the bo the game is necessarily boring. I just think there isn't really anything that challenges, that's challenging for better gear. There really isn't that thing there in PVE. In PVP, it's a whole different topic. I don't want to talk about that. Um, but at least this game has a more rich, fulfilling PVP scene than BDO. In BDO, they level capped everything. So even if you did have the excuse of, oh my god, I want to push gear because I want to PvP, that doesn't exist in BDO anymore. And in Throne of Liberty, that's still an option. And why I think a lot of BDO players will enjoy this game is because you can gear up and use that in PvP. At the last ball. Isn't this just the first part of the map? Weren't we purpose uh, to unlock more content? I think the next is in March. I think the tier upgrade for gear is in March. For Throne of Liberty. I don't know. I don't know. Well, well, yes, we don't have much, but we'll see. We said we'd limit enhanced materials so that everyone can grow at a steady pace. But when the update went live, materials were too easily obtainable. So if you had the currency, you could enhance all the way to the end. We sincerely apologize for this to all our adventurers. Truly, we are very yeah. sorry. 
This was such a big mistake. Ooh, and chat. Developers admitting to their mistakes? Wait, hold up. We need to go back a little bit. Sincerely apologize for this. At the last... However, different weapons... Through this process, the Sovereign Weapons current spec was finalized. However, we made a big mistake. At the last ball, we said we'd limit enhancement materials so that everyone can grow at a steady pace. Oh yeah, they, they said that, that everybody's going to have a fair chance, everybody's going to upgrade, you're not going to be able to just buy stuff, and he what they lied. On the first day of these new weapons, the whales had the new weapons at max. But when the update went live, materials were too easily obtainable. So, if you had the currency, you could enhance all the way to the end. We sincerely apologize for this to all our adventurers. Truly, we are very sorry. But hold up though, is that really a problem though? Isn't that a player issue though? No, isn't that a player issue though? Like you purposefully swiped all the way to get the in-game shit. Like that's a player thing. So player a game who cares someone maxed. Right, because it's kind of like the first descendant issue where people's like, um, man, there's nothing for me to do. I I bought every descendant. Well, you did this choice for yourself. Like, this is a player issue. You spent money to burn through the content. So I don't, I don't know if this is a bad thing or a good thing. Like, are you, are you apologizing because players burn through your content with, with money? I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't know if this is a, an issue. This was such a big mistake that any explanation could feel like an excuse. But if we're to be honest about this, the specs were easier compared to what we initially planned. So we thought it would be much better if adventurers didn't get too stressed out on gathering materials. In the end, we focus too much on the positive side. Every word we say gives anticipation for the game and also gives reason to why adventurers play the game. We took this factor a bit too lightly. If the specs changed, we should have explained our intentions like today, but we didn't. I want to apologize once again. We'll be sure to not let this happen again next time. We'll review more thoroughly and approach more carefully. Now let's move on from Sovereign Weapons. I'd like to talk about... I really hope they talk about the actual problem. All of these things don't seem like a problem. There needs to be new content, re reinvention. The enhancement system needs to change completely, I feel. Um, we need to talk about content. That's the real issue with BDO, is content. The main topic of today, it's about Deborah accessories. Bro, I feel like, I feel like focusing on that is not even the fucking issue, to be honest. It's only the vocal, the loud uh, minority that express this. It's the fucking people that clocks in 12 fucking hours a day. Stop talking about Devil Rack of fucking accessories. Many are expressing concerns about the decreasing value of Debrecker accessories and other accessories after the release of Sovereign Weapon. This situation was intensified by adventurers shifting from trying to get Debrecker accessories to Sovereign Weapons. If you look at the data from Korea, 57% of owned sovereign weapons are pen or higher. Okay. And nearly 7% are oct or higher. In short, many have already accomplished pen and find a few are challenging to get oct. If we look at the current situation, sovereign weapons are helping adventurers break through growth barriers. But over time, things may revert to the original state we were in. So, before it's too late, we aim to ease Deborah like sovereign weapons. In this context, we've prepared a new accessory. It's called Karazad Accessories. Like the Sovereign Weapons, Karazad is purple-rated. Its main feature is that it follows gear enhancement rules, not accessory rules. When Cronstone enhances... 
Okay, okay, okay. This is important because accessories are a huge issue in BDO, enhancing accessories. Can we like not make it downgrade ever if we use cronstones? Like, can we keep our grade up? Let's see. Follows gear enhancement rules, not accessory rules. When cronstone enhancement fails, its level doesn't drop. Even when not using cronstones, it only loses a level and it's not destroyed. Wait. To match its purple grade, it has 10 enhancement levels, not 5. Now, you might be curious. Wait, so le let me get this straight. So when your enhancement level kept when failing with cronstones, so you never downgrade on accessories. That should have been a thing a long time ago. It has 10 enhancement levels, not five. No, is, uh, am I not? Am I not understanding that correctly? I am right. Sloppy octopus, shut your ass up. I, well, I am right. Now, you might be curious about the crafting method, stats, and difficulty. It, uh, it downgrades with no cronstones. Yeah, that... Well, what about breaking? Does it not break anymore? What about breaking? Does it break? No? Oh my god, that is actually a huge change for the accessory enhancement. That's really good. Crafting method is divided into two main types. So with cronstones, it doesn't downgrade. Without cronstones, it does downgrade, but and there is no breakage. That is so good. The first makes use of existing items. When you melt yellow gray pen accessories, excluding the breaker, you can get an item called Essence of so Collect these materials to craft Parasite um, Aladdin. When um, editing this Aladdin. Um, make this the beginning a portion of the video. Um, start with this with the good news, okay? Because everything else is fucking bad. So start with this good news, and then we move on to the rest of the video. Obviously, edit me giving you instructions right now. Edit it's it off. using Debereka accessories. I'll come back to this crafting method again shortly. Accessories is divided into two main types. The first makes use of existing items. When you melt yellow gray okay. accessories, excluding Debereka, you can get an item called Essence of Dawn. Collect these materials to craft Karazad accessories. Essence of Dawn okay. isn't... this is pretty nice. ...only obtainable through pen accessories. We've made a drop in certain monster zones as well. The second method involves... This is not bad. ...using Debereka accessories. I'll come back to this crafting method again shortly. We like that. Next, regarding stats, as shown here based on the rings, unenhanced Karazad starts with lower AP, but it increases with higher enhancement levels. At 10, it matches Pen Crescent. And at Pen, it matches Ted Debereka. At level 8 or Opt, it has the same AP as Pen Debereka. And at Nov and Deck, AP increases by 1 each. The overall difficulty, including enhancement rates, is designed to feel similar to Sovereign Weapons. Reaching Pen is a bit easier, and achieving Opt, which has the same stats as Pen Debereka, oh is also set to be slightly easier when compared yeah. to Pen Debereka. However, for the final levels, Nov and Deck, the difficulty is higher, leaving them as an area of challenge. Compared to Debereka accessories, fewer consoles okay. are needed. So, please note that Karazad accessories cannot be registered them as an area of challenge. Compared to Debrecca accessories, fewer cronstones are needed. So, please note okay. that Karazad accessories cannot be registered on the central market. Some of you may have started to wonder what happens to Debrecca now. Many of you have worked hard to create pen Debrecca accessories. What is that? I got a mail? So, we wanted to ensure that their values are fully recognized. Okay. For enhanced Debereka accessories, they can be converted into enhanced Karazad accessories. Ten Debereka accessories can be converted to Pen Karazad of the same stats. Based on stats, Pen Debereka... Whoa! A Ted Debereka accessory can be to Pen... Oh, that's nice. Her accessories that conversion be rate is really good. Come on, pen uh, eight. But it falls a little short in terms of value. So, nine. We've decided for them to be converted to Nov Karazad instead. What? Okay, so pen all the way to Nov, that's so big. That's so huge. And Ted is pretty decent too, though. 
So in short, adventurers with pen Deborah accessories will gain plus one AP for each piece after the patch. Those who are now starting can aim to grow their Charizard accessories, which are easier to enhance than Deborah accessories. Or you can continue to try for pen Deborah or aim to convert them to get enhanced Charizard accessories. Okay, that's not bad. Next, let's talk about diversifying gear. Adventurers have shared a lot of feedback. Diversifying gear, girl, bye. Noting that the supply of more Deborah accessories has led to the same item setups. As a result, unique yellow accessories have decreased in value over time. With that in mind, Charizard accessories were designed so that you can set them in a variety of ways. However, diversifying these combinations may require owning several high value accessories, which can be burdensome. Also, for those who already have high value accessories with accuracy, it could lead to the fear in having to start farming all over again. We aim to minimize these issues and inconveniences due to this change. We approach these potential problems from a fresh perspective. First of all, Charizard accessories have a special feature an exclusive crystal slot that unlocks only when. Quit. In the crystal slot, okay. you can transfuse add-on crystals to give your Charizard accessory a special stat. The add-on crystals can be obtained by melting accessories with special stats. For example, melting a door earring or Taurus belt provides materials to craft the add-on crystal that gives accuracy. Okay, when you transfuse the crystal, the Charizard accessory will turn into bad. an accessory. If you're like a BDO junkie and you understand all of this, which some of you guys might not understand, this is actually kind of big. Gearing up has become more fun with special stats, with decreased displayed AP, but increased accuracy. Accuracy is just an example. We are also preparing add-on crystals with stats including Black Spirit's Rage, Damage really Reduction, good Evasion, and more. These yeah. add-on stats can be combined in various ways and will change the stats of Charizard accessories, allowing you to set them in different ways based on your playstyle or class. And these add-on crystals are being prepared to be obtained in various methods, and not just... And it doesn't seem, like, annoying either. The whole Sovereign method seems pretty chill, pretty casual. Actually much better than um, their in uh, enhancement system in the past from melting accessories. Oh, yeah. For example, accuracy pen accessories like Dawn Earring and Taurus Belt can be melted to get the highest score. But yeah, but that's Great a very accuracy. good uh, a very good question. Geared and BDO for what? Cap the war? Yeah, that we still need to talk about the content in BDO. This is fun for the people who still invested in the game, who still log in every day. This is great, but we need to talk about the content. What the fuck do we do with all of this power? The add on crystal. What this means is that you can also loot them from monster zones or from special crafting, and having only the highest grade can be burdensome, so we're preparing lower grade versions of the add on crystals to be used until now. For those who mainly enjoy PvE, the add on crystals aren't a must, but when enjoying PvP content, there was a burden with creating setups. I hope these lower grade crystals can lessen the burden a bit. And please note, these add on crystals do not shatter. Once this patch is applied, no some shattering crystals! That should never happen ever. Yellow we need to reinvent the whole thing, man. Take away shattering uh, crystals in general. It's time. Accessories might become rarer. This might mean having to go to low difficulty monster zones again. To prevent this, we'll ensure these enhanced yellow accessories can be obtained in high difficulty monster zones. We'll implement this in various ways to lessen the burden. Okay. Additionally, stacks required for enhancement, especially more high stacks, will likely be needed. Currently, materials for upgrades available in the central market, like crystallized despair, will be changed to be transformable to high stacks. Once everything is prepared, we'll provide detailed guidance with the patch. To summarize with intent included, no. let's go Cr over it. Crystals one will still smash, but not the new crystals they're planning to implement on the on the accessories. It's time. Karazad is a new purple grade accessory with the same enhancement system as the sovereign weapons. It cannot be registered on the central market, but we've lowered the enhancement difficulty to ease the burden for those who plan to craft it. However, to maintain as much of the value of Debrecker's accessories as possible, and Debrecker accessories can be converted to a better Karazad accessory. Lastly, by converting like the existing low specialized like accessories to a new type of crystal, Karazad accessories were designed to enable a variety of setups. All right, I've shared everything up to here. I'm curious to hear what our adventurers think. Some of you might be taken aback by this sudden news. Adding new equipment or tweaking the existing balance is a big burden for us. But even so, at this point, we believe the difficulty of Debrecker accessories needs some. Easing. We're aiming to release the new accessories and special crystals introduced today in the last week of October. We'll make sure everything's ready oh. for the update. That's all the news for now, but there's one other thing I'd like to mention. Remember, I mentioned earlier that the materials for crafting the Karazad accessory could be found in certain monster zones. Well, we're preparing new monster zones in the land of the Morning Light. The Morning Light was developed as a region of bonus side stories to offer an experience unique from the main continent of Black Desert. There's already plenty of PvE on the main continent, so we questioned whether we needed to offer the same experience in the Morning Light. This thought was a major a, reason a behind- new, new monster zones in the Morning Light? Okay. Creating the black my shrine open, with my a boss open mouth is focus. pretty cute, right? After the release of the Morning Light, many of you have enjoyed the Black Shrine, but there was still some disappointment over the absence of a new Monster Zone. Monster Zones need more than just item drops. True, they need true. memorable monsters yes. and settings. The Land of the Morning Light has many beautiful places, so we think that's why there are more opinions like this. We agree with this point as well. So we've decided to add more content for you to explore in the Morning Light. With the release of the character, are they going to add chests in the world with puzzles like I suggested? Come on now. 
If they do that, Chad, they're definitely Ellie supporters. Arzad accessories. Oh Where the Debs app? Where's the Debs? Uh, who is the Deb and P uh, BDL right now? Speak up in my chat. Dokkabi Forest and Honglim Base will be introduced first, followed by Golden Pig Cave and Gowun Plateau as new what the monster call me? zones. These new monster zones in the Morning Light are the first since Ulakita, and we're eager to spice things up beyond the usual PvE content. Okay. Take the Golden Pig Cave, for instance. At the entrance stands a giant pig statue. As you battle the monsters within this area, the statue gradually fills with gold. Once it reaches its its limit, it explodes, showering rewards for you to collect. It's like cracking open a piggy bank. We're developing similar field mechanics that add fun without disrupting the combat experience. We're also exploring the addition of other exciting features. Yet, I understand that new monster zones might not be entirely welcome right now, especially since last year we focused on tidying up existing content. We believe there's a greater desire for new content. We understand the disappointment adventurers feel, and to address these shortcomings, we'll all work hard on the upcoming updates. Until now, growth goals have been sidelined in favor of expanding content. Along with the item updates introduced today, we're gearing up for content that will inspire new goals. We haven't been able to talk about this today, but we are working on content like Hardcore Server that adventurers are waiting for. We appreciate I'm going to come back for Hardcore Server's PvP. PvP Ellie is coming back to BDO during Hardcore. Your patience. This is it for items and monster zones. I can't now, wait. Now, let's take a look at Dosa's Awakening. Okay, this is a new spec chat. Dosa's Awakening. Here we go. The long journey's end. How lonely it is. Okay, come on, voice. I'm feeling something tingling down there. Beneath the moonless sky. Beneath these Wandering panties. Wandering clouds drift, come lost on, and titty. forlorn. Come on, webbed fingers. In the absolute darkness. Darkness? With hollow steps, the path ahead is treacherous. Treacherous. Oh my lord, she's dead. Oh my god, those are some cheap glue gl for those lashes. Yet onward I shall go, breathing only through my resolve. Thus I will uphold the legacy of Sangdo, a vow etched in deep regret. Boom! I shall carry it to the very end. Uh, when he 
in one minute. <laughs> Take it! Oh my god. Greetings, I don't care! This I'm, is just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bro, that was so good. Oh my, am I coming back to PDO? Tuesday? Yes, they do. Game design executive leader at Black Desert Studio. Capturing traditional Korean do wielders of rain, wind, and lightning, such as Hong Gil Dong or John Wuchi have already been embodied in the game by our very own Wusa and Meigu classes. Thus, we approached those as awakening differently. We wanted to return to the very basic of Do arts and design the class around the philosophy of five elements. With Succession Dosa, we focus more. I definitely don't want to hear on the concepts of umbral this. and luminous energies of water, wood, metal, and earth. For our Western adventurers, it's somewhat similar yet not entirely to the classical four elements. This results in vibrant and spectacular action and effects unseen before in other classes. Wood, the awakening dosa, we wood is an element. The Asian concept of the generative effect, whereas the four elements focus on the weakness of the elements. The generative effect highlights how the elements augment each other. For example, using a fire elemental skill followed by a wood skill additionally amplifies the fire energy by using the wood as fuel, resulting in greater fire damage. Similarly, using a water skill followed by a wood skill enhances the wood energy by using water as nourishment, resulting in greater damage. Upon hearing this, the awakening dosa might seem complex, but we're working on making the generative effect easy and fun to use in combat. Now, here's an example of the skills and the generative effect. As mentioned, using wood as fuel amplifies fire energy. It looks cool. Fire I'm still not interested in do dosa, but this is energy. nice. Using the wood skill here enhances the lingering fire energy with the wood energy, causing another explosion of immense power. Here's another example. This skill is wood band. That was your hybrid classes is his superior gap. From existing okay, chat. I think we devoured this um, uh, video. I think um, that I'm very okay. Let's let's give you my TLDR of this uh, dev note. Number one, I'm really happy that they did a dev note. I think it's really good. It keeps uh, in touch with their community. This is fine. I'm a uh, keep ass uh, saying it again. Um, Pearl Abyss. You can definitely hire me for voice acting your next class, which is succubus inspired. Um, I will do it. I will voice the English voice act um, acting. Here's a little sample. Oh, so you're coming to my lair. There, you can hire me. I'm free, I'm available, I'll do it. I'll do it for free, I don't care. I'll do the English voice acting for your new succubus class that comes out. Um, that's gonna be really nice and interesting. I love the new enhancement systems that they've done. I like that they talked about the hardcore PvP. This is fun. This is something that I've said that I was interested in a long time ago. Um, so I'm, I'm, I want to see what that's all about. I wanted to try it. And I want new content. I'm, I'm happy that they're de adding some PvE shit. You know, that might be fun. So that's good. Anyways, let's close the video out. Uh, YouTube, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, or a pony dies in the world if you don't subscribe to me. I mean, to be honest, it's going to die regardless, but you could just subscribe to me, and maybe maybe you'll, you'll fi uh, save one. Goodbye. I can't blink. Frick. Hey, you might be new around here, huh? Well, hold your horses. Before you click off this video, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. As it does, help me grow as a streamer. Now do yourself a favor and do it, mister.